हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई वेलकम यू इन लेक्चर नंबर ट्वेल्व ऑन हाइपोथेसिस टेस्टिंग फ्रॉम लास्ट टू लेक्चर्स ऑनवर्ड्स वी आर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट टू सैम्पल टी टेस्ट इट इज़ दी हाइपोथेसिस टेस्ट वेन एवर वी हैव स्मॉल सैम्पल्स इस्पेशली इफ सैम्पल साइजिज आर लेस देन थर्टी वी विल अप्लाय टी टेस्ट विथ सर्टेन assumptions in this lecture we are going to discuss this question which was asked in gtu winter 2019 exam what is given uh, the following figures refer to observations in live independent samples so we are given two samples sample 1 and sample 2 and their observations are given analyze whether the samples have been drawn from the population of equal means that means using this data of two samples we have to analyze that whether these samples are drawn from the populations which are having equal means so we have to test whether the means of two population are same at 5% level of significance so here we are given two samples from two populations from population 1 sample is denoted by this roman letter 1 and this sample 2 is coming or drawn from sample 2 and we can count the number of observations are 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 for both the samples sample size is 10 that is n1 is 10 n2 is also 10 and uh, from this data uh, we have to decide or we have to test whether the population means are same or not that means we have to test this null hypothesis mu1 equal to mu2 or in other words difference of two population means is zero and uh, because sample sizes are less than 30 we have to go for t test and for t test we require certain assumptions here no assumption is given if we want to apply t test then uh, we must have two populations which are normal so the samples from which we are drawing the populations from which we are drawing the samples they must be normal populations so that is not given here and without that assumption we cannot apply two sample t test so we must uh, uh, consider this assumption if assumption is not given in the question we will assume that both the populations are normal also we require independent sample so that is given here it is given that these observations follow independent samples the following figures refer to observations in independent samples that is samples are independent also we can assume that samples are random that is random sampling is drawn for this hypothesis testing and uh, uh, now we don't know whether we have equal population variances or different population variances so we we can also assume that population variances are equal so that we can apply pooled variance t test we can estimate this uh, equal population variance by pooled estimator sp square which we have seen in earlier two lectures so with all these things in mind we can apply two sample t test now to apply two sample t test the t statistic is x bar minus y bar minus mu1 minus mu2 pooled standard deviation times 1 over square root of n1 square root of 1 over n1 plus 1 over n2 where this sp square is given by n1 minus 1 times s1 square 
प्लस एन टू माइनस वन टाइम्स एस टू स्क्वायर डिवाइडेड बाय एन वन प्लस एन टू माइनस टू वी हैव टू कैलकुलेट दिस वैल्यू वैल्यू ऑफ टी स्टेटिस्टिक सो फॉर दिस वी रिक्वायर ऑल दिस थिंग्स वी रिक्वायर एन वन एन टू वी रिक्वायर सैम्पल मीन्स एक्स बार एंड वाई बार एंड वी रिक्वायर सैम्पल वेरियंस इज ऑल्सो एंड हियर we are given samples in this form we are not given sample means and sample standard deviations that we have to calculate from these two uh, data for sample 1 and sample 2 so if you recall the definition of sample mean is x bar equal to sum of all the observations divided by sample size that is total number of observations similarly for sample 2 we consider variable as y that is sigma y over n2 and uh, suppose population variance of sample 1 is denoted by s1 square then the formula for sample variance is sigma x minus x bar whole square divided by sample size minus 1 if we have population variance then we here we write total number of observations but for sample variance we are considering total number of observation minus 1 so be careful here whenever you are calculating sample variance in the denominator you have to write total number of observations minus 1 this is one way to calculate sample variance now sometimes whatever x bar we will calculate if that x bar is not an integer if it is in decimal place then our calculations will be not comfortable they become tedious so in that case we can rewrite this formula in some another shortcut form also here x minus x bar square can be written as x bar x square minus 2x times x bar plus x bar whole square divided by n1 minus 1 now this sigma we can split this because all these are finite sums variable is uh, this uh, suppose i have n1 observations then here i will write i equal to 1 to n1 so this x bar is independent of this index i so here i can write this as minus 2x bar 2x bar is independent of this summation index so we can write this as 2x bar times x similarly here x bar square is also independent of index of summation so we can write x bar square into sigma 1 divided by n1 minus 1 now from this we can replace sigma x by n1 into sample mean so in the next step i am replacing this sigma x by n1 into sample mean and because we have n1 observations this sigma 1 is going to be n1 so we have n1 times x bar square divided by n1 minus 1 we are writing our formula for sample variance in another simple form so this now we can write as sigma x square minus here you can see it is 2 times n1 x bar into x bar that is x bar square plus n1 into x bar square divided by n1 minus 1 and now if we take n1 into x bar square common or we can see this is minus 2 n1 x bar square and plus n1 x bar square that means minus n1 into x bar square divided by n1 minus 1 this is the another formula for sample variance s1 square equal to sigma x square minus n1 times x bar square over n1 minus 1 similarly for another sample if we are using variable y then we can write s2 square 
इक्वल टू सिग्मा वाई स्क्वेर माइनस एन टू टाइम्स स्क्वायर ऑफ सैंपल मीन डिवाइडेड बाय एन टू माइनस वन सो दिस फॉर्मूलाज आर हेल्पफुल वेन एवर दिस एक्स बार एंड वाई बार आर नॉन इंटीजर वैल्यूज इन दैट केस वी कैन यूज दिस फॉर्मूलाज ऑल्सो एंड इफ यू आर कम्फर्टेबल यू कैन गो फॉर दिस फॉर्मूला डायरेक्टली यू कैलकुलेट एक्स बार एंड देन यू फाइंड आउट स्क्वायर ऑफ एक्स माइनस एक्स बार एंड टेक समेसन एंड डिवाइड बाई एन वन माइनस वन फॉर दिस प्रॉब्लम आई हैव यूज दिस फॉर्मूला टू कैलकुलेट सैम्पल वेरियंस फॉर बोथ दी सैम्पल्स सैम्पल वेरियंस इक्वल टू सिग्मा एक्स स्क्वायर माइनस एन वन टाइम्स एक्स बार स्क्वायर डिवाइडेड बाई एन वन माइनस वन सो ऑल दीज थिंग्स आर रिक्वायर्ड टू कैलकुलेट दिस पुल्ड और कम्बाइंड वेरियंस we require this n1 minus 1 into sample variance for first sample n2 minus 1 sample variance for second sample n1 plus n2 minus 1 so first i have calculated x bar and sample variance for first sample then for second sample we calculate this uh, y bar and sample variance for that sample and then using all these values we will be able to decide pooled estimator of equal population variance and after calculating this sp square we will obtain this pooled standard deviation and then we will be able to decide value of t statistic and then we will compare this value with critical value of t which is at 5% level of significance so i have written all these things systematically here i have to assume that both the populations are normal and uh, population variances are equal so that we can apply this pooled variance t test and it is already given that samples are independent which is also required so once you have all these things in your mind you can write your answer in this way systematically it is given that two samples are independent and we made these assumptions because they are not given and without these assumptions we cannot apply this pooled variance t test so first assumption we will make is two populations are normal second assumption required is population variances are equal that is sigma 1 square and sigma 2 square are equal and equal value is say sigma square and with these assumptions two sample t test is applicable and uh, we use pooled variance sp square as pooled estimator of population variance which is equal for both the populations now i have calculated sample mean and uh, sample variance for first sample i have written values of x in this first column and uh, using this total sigma x is 266 and total number of observations are 10 so x bar that is sample mean for first sample is sigma x over n1 266 divided by 10 that is 26.6 that is the sample mean for first sample sample variance is given by sigma x square minus n1 times x bar square divided by n1 minus 1 so we require this quantity for that i have taken square of each observation and i obtain sigma x square as 7562 so that i write here sigma x square 7562 minus n1 is 10 x bar we have obtained is 26.6 whole square n1 is 10 therefore 10 minus 1 is 9 and using scientific calculator up to four decimal places i find that sample variance for first sample is 54.034 similarly i have calculated mean and sample variance for second sample for second sample we are using variable y first we calculate y bar which is sigma y over n2 so i have taken total of all y values this is sigma y 
which is 293 divided by total number of observations 10 and sample variance turns out to be sample mean for second sample turns out to be 29.3 for sample variance we have to find out uh, sum of all y square values so i have taken square of each of y values and then i find this total of sigma y square it is 9215 that i substitute here sigma y square 9215 minus n2 is also 10 y bar is 29.3 and here n2 minus 1 that is 10 minus 1 which is 9 therefore sample variance for second sample is 70.0311 so we have calculated for this given data given data is in row row form so using all these observations we calculate their mean and variance we have calculated mean and variance for both the samples so that we can apply this uh, two sample t-test with certain assumptions if assumptions are not given you should write that we are applying two sample t-test with these assumptions as we have written in this case these two conditions must be there to apply this pooled variance t-test so they are not given in the question so we write that we, these are our assumptions that two populations are normal and population variances are equal and under these assumptions we can apply two sample t-test now once we have all these values sample mean sample variances then we can calculate value of t statistic before that i have written this null hypothesis we want to test whether two population means are same or not so as usual equality parts always goes in null hypothesis so null hypothesis is h0 mu1 equal to mu2 alternative hypothesis is contrary to the null hypothesis so these two are equal contrary statement is these two are different and because we have uh, this inequality sign uh, not equality sign this is going to be two tailed test either mu1 can be less than mu2 or mu1 can be greater than mu2 so we have two sided alternative that is two sample t test level of significance is given as 5 percent so we will consider alpha equal to 0 0.05 and now we find out test statistic which is given by this formula where this sp square is a pooled variance or pooled estimator of population variance and uh, we have this formula okay you must remember this formula therefore i have written it again and again now i am having all these values n1 n2 s1 square s2 square that i substitute from my calculations and i obtain that pooled estimator for population variance is 62.0278 and uh, if we take positive square root of this we obtain pooled standard deviation 7.8758 once we have this value of sp uh, we can calculate now t statistic we are having x bar y bar and this is going to be zero under null hypothesis null hypothesis is that mu1 and mu2 are equal and we are applying t statistic under this null hypothesis we assume that null hypothesis is true therefore mu1 and mu2 are equal and therefore this difference is zero we will put this is equal to zero x bar is 26.6 y bar is 29.3 n1 and n2 are 10 and sp is 7.8758 substituting all these values we have this value of t statistic it is negative 0 0.7666 so this is how we can calculate t statistic we have to remember this formula for t statistic and before applying this formula we have to find out this pooled standard deviation using the given sample data 
and if sample variances and sample mean are not given we have to first calculate them here they are not given so first we have calculated sample mean and sample variance for this uh, two samples and after that we are calculating value of pooled standard deviation and then we calculate value of t statistic now we are given two tailed test and the level of significance is 0.05 degrees of freedom are n1 plus n2 minus 1 that is 10 plus 10 this is not 1 2 so 20 minus 2 which is 18 so i have to uh, find out value of t alpha by 2 critical there are two critical values because we are having two tailed test suppose this is rough sketch of t distribution then because we are having two sided alternatives area in these two tails is alpha by 2 so critical values are t suffix alpha by 2 minus t suffix alpha by 2 and area in both the tails is half of this 0 0.05 that is area is 0 0.025 that is t suffix 0 0.025 and this is negative of this and this is rejection region now we have to first decide what is this critical value t alpha by 2 so for that we can go for t table we will keep in mind that degrees of freedom are 18 and uh, we are interested in t suffix 0 0.025 that is level of significance is 5 percent but if we divide this into two parts then uh, we can go for 2.5 percent level of significance for one tail test or 5 percent level of significance for two tail test so for that we are going for that t table so let me open this statistical tables i have to go for t table just a minute i have to open in some another application so these are the critical values of t and we are interested in 18 degrees of freedom so this is corresponding to 18 degrees of freedom for two tail test i have to look under 5 percent and similarly one tail test that is 2.5 percent so i have to look below this column or in this column so we can see the intersecting point is this one 2.101 degrees of freedom are 18 value of alpha is 5 percent and because we are having two tailed test half of this is 2.5 percent and you can see here we are given two tail test and one tail test for two tail test it is 5 percent for one tail test it is 2.5 percent that means i have to look in this column up to 18 degrees of freedom and this is the value 2.025 which is 2.101 so now i can use this value here this is nothing but this critical value is 2.101 and this critical value is negative of this 101 and at the center value of t is 0 and uh, this t is negative 0.7 so it might be somewhere here this is the value of t statistic and we know that if we are to the left side of this critical value or greater uh, right side of this critical value then we are in rejection region and in between these two values it is non rejection region so value of t statistic is less than this critical value therefore we are in non rejection region and therefore we fail to reject null hypothesis so that i have written here 
alpha is 0 0.05 alpha by 2 is 0 0.025 degrees of freedom are 18 from t table t suffix 0 0.025 is 2.101 for 18 degrees of freedom therefore negative of t suffix 0 0.025 is minus 2.101 and uh, i have drawn this figure also so as i discuss these two are critical values we find that this critical value is 2.101 and due to symmetry this is minus 2.101 value of t statistic is somewhere here and it is in the non rejection region this value of t statistic is greater than minus t.025 that means we are in non rejection region shaded by blue lines hence we fail to reject null hypothesis what is null hypothesis null hypothesis assumes that two population means are same so we fail to reject this statement that means this statement we can consider as correct statement therefore the decision is the means of two population are same at 5% level of significance so what uh, what is new thing in this uh, question is we are given row data for both the samples so using given data we have to first calculate sample means and sample variances for both the data for sample variance remember this formula sigma x minus x bar square divided by n minus 1 Another formula is sigma x square minus n times x bar square divided by n minus 1. This is direct formula. This is shortcut formula. Using this formula, you have to calculate sample variances for both the samples. After that, you have to check whether conditions for applying pooled variance test are given or not. If they are not given, then you have to assume that your samples are independent populations are normal samples are random also both the samples are random they are independent both the populations are normal populations and if you want to apply pooled variance test you have to assume that population variances are equal under these assumptions only you can apply this pooled variance t test in this question it is given that samples are independent but these two conditions are not given so we have done this question under these assumptions we assume that both the populations are normal and we also assume that population variances are equal under these two assumptions we are calculating that pooled variance and then apply t statistic using that pooled variance so this is all about this session i hope you like it thanks for watching